The quality of life. Questions form about whether a robot is actually a life form, and it's not dated this time. The gang plays poker, and Worf asks about Jordy's beard, which leads to a whole conversation. About beards. Beverly jokingly talks about beards being fashion statements, which upsets the men more and more as the conversation goes on. They make a bet to shave their beards if they lose, and Beverly will dye her hair brown if she loses. And I was hoping that would go somewhere later, but it doesn't. And Picard calls them all to the bridge. The Enterprise is going to examine a new mining technology being used on Tyrus 7A. Called a particle fountain. Geordi goes down to talk to the person in charge, Dr. Farallon, and he's not impressed. Is this technology more efficient than conventional mining techniques? Commander. And the way he talked, it sounded as if he had a personal stake in things. Which made me assume that this was going to turn into another failed Geordi romance episode. Which thankfully it did not. The main problem they're having is getting the particle stream up to full strength. But she thinks that given more time, she can get it there. Suddenly, the power grid fluctuates and the whole core is going to explode or something, and Geordi says they'll have to shut everything down. And we see that orange light tube prop, which we haven't seen since, I think, suddenly human. Farallon takes the opportunity to show Geordi her exocomp, a revolutionary new invention that is basically a dumb-looking remote-controlled robot. She says it can get where it needs to go and fix the malfunction right away, and Jordy is skeptical, but it ends up working. And it works immediately, which made me wonder if she had rigged things to go wrong in the first place just so she could show off her invention. That's a good point. Farallon brings up the exocomp to show everybody else, and she and Data start talking about technology, which seems to annoy Jordy, which I didn't really understand. He's the chief engineer, does he not like when people talk about technology? Or maybe he was just jealous. Yeah, his behavior in the whole first section of this episode was a little bit weird. He's probably upset they weren't talking about his beard instead. She demos the Exocomp's capabilities and shows that it can replicate whatever tools it needs to solve a problem. The micro replicator creates new circuit pathways within the unit's memory. So in a sense, they are learning. Exactly. Later, she tells Picard to postpone his report on the particle fountain until it's at full strength and the Exocomps can help get them there. Jordy says the only risk is falling further behind, and Data says he wants to see the Exocomps reach their full potential. Later, Data tells her that the Exocomps have fixed way more problems than people could fix, which, based on its design, was probably only true because she designed it to work specifically with the otherwise impractical access holes in that facility. What are those holes even for if they can't even get to anything in there without those Exocomps? At one point, an exocomp refuses to follow commands to enter a conduit to fix a plasma breach, and as they're trying to figure it out, there's an explosion inside the conduit. And a shower of space rocks. Afterward, Jordy helps to examine the exocomp, and they find a dramatic increase of circuit pathways. Farallon says that can happen, and once it's so corrupted, you have to start all over again. And wipe their memories, which they don't have time for. Jordy says it's a good thing the exocomp malfunctioned since it would have been destroyed. And Data asks if he's suggesting the Exocomp exhibited self-preservation, to which Jordy replies, You mean the plot of this episode? <laughs> Get out of here, Data. <laughs> Data takes the Exocomp to his own quarters and hooks it up to the ship's computer, where he learns that it damaged itself and then repaired itself. And he's puzzled why it would do that. Jordy talks to Farallon in 10 Forward, where she brags about how high her determination stat is. And the Particle Fountain is her life's work. Whatever it takes to prove this technology, I'll do. In Sick Bay, turns out Beverly has been practicing her batless skills, which I really wanted to see, and I hope we actually <laughs> see in a later episode. Yeah, she talks about fighting with Worf. And then Data walks in to ask Beverly what the definition of life is. Life is what enables plants and animals to consume food, adapt themselves to their surroundings, and reproduce. He tells her he wants to test a hypothesis, and says an hypothesis, which pissed me off. He's just a robot. Cut him some slack. It's not like he's alive. Data throws out several examples to counter Beverly's definition, including himself. He says he is considered alive despite being a machine, but she says he is unique. And he says he wonders what in the process of turning him from a series of parts into Data made him alive. 
and Beverly says they've been struggling to answer that question for centuries. And that struggle is what shows them their place in the universe. So deep. <laughs> and she presents that perspective as absolute. That's the only thing that makes life worth living, is questioning it. I tend to go by the Agent Smith purpose of life. The purpose of life is to end. <laughs> <laughs> She says she's sorry she couldn't be much help, but Data says she was helpful, demonstrating that he has mastered the ability to lie. Jordy and Farallon are preparing to start work when Data beams down and tells them to stop using the exocomps because he believes they are a life form. They have a big meeting where Data explains his theory, using the exocomps self-damage and repairs as evidence, and Farallon challenges him at every step. Very aggressively. Troy asks why she won't even entertain the possibility that exocomps are alive when she is talking to a living machine, which again was a stupid description of Data. Farallon says Data was created to be an artificial life form, but the exocomps were created to be tools. And then Data says, There is a big difference between you and a virus, but both are alive. But viruses, at least in the present, are not generally considered to be alive, although that does depend on what definition of life you're going off of. There is another organism on this planet that follows the same pattern of virus. Jordy says they can test Data's theory by threatening an exocomp survival to see what happens. They recreate the plasma conduit breach in a simulation and send the exocomp in. But it fails to react to the artificial threat, and Farallon gloats. Apparently this one experiment is all it takes for them to decide that the exocomps are not alive. And she smugly struts off to her next scene. Data is the only one that's not sure because he's a robot and can relate to other robots and decides to continue testing. Beverly goes to talk to him and during their conversation, the exocomp returns on its own with a tool not programmed for the simulation. And it turns out it detected the simulated breach and fixed that as well, realizing there was no actual danger. And at one point, Data says he felt that the exocomps could be progenitors of himself. And I'm surprised they never brought up LOL. Yeah. Picard goes down to the planet to do his own evaluation of the particle fountain, and suddenly there's another power malfunction, and radiation is going to flood the whole area. And I was looking forward to Geordi doing his arm circle thing to direct people out of the area, <laughs> but it didn't happen. I know people talk about the Picard maneuver when Picard pulls down his uniform, yeah, and that arm circle is the motion I associate with Geordi. They're getting ready to beam everyone out, but one dude is missing, so Geordi goes to find him, and Picard ends up going to find Geordi. It turns out there was an explosion or something, it was unclear, the other guy's dead, and now Picard and Geordi are stuck on the station because there's too much interference to beam them out. And they've only got 20 minutes before they die. Well, 22 minutes. Well, 23 minutes, depending on... And they've only got about 20 minutes before they die. <laughs> Riker, Worf, and Data confer with Farallon and decide they could set the exocomps to explode in the particle stream, which would disable it. Data is against it, but is overruled. And he finally mentions the results of his continued tests and says if he is correct that they are alive, they will not allow themselves to be destroyed. They go to beam the exocomps down, but the transports won't work, and it's because Data has locked the controls. Yeah, I thought the exocomps were going to have taken over the Enterprise or something. Riker takes the time to take Data to a separate room to argue about his actions, even though they have less than 20 minutes before Picard and Geordi are dead. And Riker says he'll be relieved of duty, but Data says he does not believe that sacrificing one life to save another is justified. Data volunteers to go down himself, since he has a choice, but Riker points out the radiation will be too much, even for him. Because apparently Riker understands how Data works. He provides the alternative to allowing the exocomps to make their own choice about going down, which Data is okay with. In the transporter room, Data gives the exocomps their new directions, but they reprogram themselves using their superior experience to try a different solution. When they beam into the station, they begin siphoning power to weaken the particle stream. To allow the Enterprise to beam Picard and Geordi out. They are then able to beam two of the exocomps back up as well, but the third one has to sacrifice itself to allow the transporter to keep working. Farallon has done a complete 180 and is now very amiable towards Data and his findings, despite her life's work that she was so passionate about in 10 Forward being completely destroyed. It was a really dumb and abrupt change of character. When Farallon leaves, Picard talks to Data, who says he remembered how Picard defended his rights back in Measure of a Man, and felt he had to do the same for the exocomps because no one else would. And Picard says that was very human of him. The quality of life. Overall, 
This was a very weak and shallow exploration of the ideas presented. They've tackled these ideas a few times already in things like Measure of a Man and Home Soil, and this episode didn't do anything to set itself apart other than having the exocomps become alive, in quotation marks, on their own. There are interesting questions to explore here, potentially, but the show rarely seems willing to go beneath the surface of such questions, instead just bringing them up as if that's all it takes. Farallon was also handled in exactly the same simplistic way that they always handle characters like this, where they aren't truly bad, just kind of assholes, and once they're proven wrong, they suddenly become super friendly. I can excuse the exocomp design, given that this is a 90s TV show, but I thought they looked kind of dumb. I'm glad they were actual models and not CGI. I didn't think this episode was terrible, it just didn't give us anything that we haven't seen before and didn't do anything especially interesting. And I was really hoping it was going to be about Jordy's beard. I gave it a C-. I gave it a C. Before they know the exocomps are sentient, why are they so surprised at a little robot that can go into a tube and fix stuff? Do they not use probes for a bunch of space stuff all the time? It actually seems like more typical sci-fi to have little robots wandering around doing stuff. I'm still waiting for that gonk droid cameo. <laughs> I'm glad Jordy did not try to start a romantic relationship. Based on past writing, I would not have been surprised if the episode went that way. This shared a lot of elements to evolution when a bunch of really tiny robots turned out to be alive, and the dude in charge of them also got super defensive and cartoony. So is Dr. Farallon as smart as Dr. Soong, but accidentally? Because she did what he did, but didn't intend to? And does that mean that if Starfleet's technology ever passes a certain point concerning artificial life, they're always going to run into this dilemma? Based on their history, they should come up with how they're going to handle it now instead of as it happens, because it's already happened more than once. But based on their history, they won't. Farallon turned from a thoughtful, intelligent character into a cartoon villain and complete bitch, and then did a complete switch back at the end on a great character arc. And even without the exocomp angle, this whole particle fountain project seemed ill thought out and ill prepared. Every time anyone entered the room, something went catastrophically wrong. <laughs> Right? Yeah, I mean, the Enterprise is going there to, you know, determine the viability of that technology, and it, it's falling apart at every single step. I would have said no pretty much right away and made this episode three minutes long. Be like somebody saying, hey, I'm gonna replace all of the copper wire in my house with jello. <laughs> <laughs> you wanna come check it out, see if it's viable? <laughs> I don't know if that's the best comparison, but okay. <laughs> Yet another stellar episode for this season. So if you have additional ideas on how to improve technology the way Farallon did, let us know. Because we'll tell you it's a dumb idea. And we won't even have to beam down to your planet. But if you make a cool little dumb robot, let us know. <laughs> <laughs>